And I continue with the promises concerning the AOs that I decided to review from Valkyra. And uh, today we're going to take one out of two 240 AAOs that I promised. This is Valkyr's V240 Lite that can cool up to 250 watts of TDP, which is insane. And honestly, I'm not quite sure if golden samples exist or are they true or this is just some, uh, I don't know, lucky chance that I got this sample right here because all the others perform regularly, normal, normally a bit above the average when we're talking about the price per performance ratio, but this one outperformed literally everything. And we're going to go in depth to check out what it's actually all about. But before we do, let's go a bit into details. As you already know, I covered V360 Lite and uh, we have this one here as well. So this is 240, two 120 millimeter fans where we have two Valkyr B12 fans. These are 120 PWM addressable RGB, which also have four pin uh, PWM connection and three pin uh, five volts addressable RGB. Then we have copper cold plate. Uh, dimensions of the cold plate are 58.64, 56.28 and 3.3 millimeters. Aluminium radiator with dimensions of 120, 276, 27. Radiator size is 240. And when we're talking about the pump speed, 800 to 2800. Connectors are 4 pin PWM and 3 pin 5 volts addressable RGB for the pump block top that is magnetically attached. Now, before we go further, we have pump block top, which is also addressable RGB, logical. Tube length is shorter, 395 millimeters compared to 425 when we're talking about the 360. And then we have polyester filament with tubing sleeve. And we continue with the B12 fans, which come two of these with the airflow 81.68 CFM, 4.0 millimeters H2 static pressure. Fan speed is from 800 to 2150. Fluid dynamic bearing, 30.5 decibels, addressable RGB, PBT plus PC when we're talking about the material, and the standard connection with the white splitter at the end for the addressable RGB. This is good because it gives you quite easy option when you're connecting everything. Because fans are daisy chained with proprietary cable, which means one PWM header is running out when you when basically it's already connected, and then you have addressable RGB already pre-connected as well because one cable is running out of the fans and uh, when you connect the PWM for the fans, you connect PWM for the pump and then you connect first addressable RGB header for the fans and in that Y splitter, you connect the pump because the pump doesn't have the Y splitter. So it's really straightforward. You do have to lose those extra cables somewhere, but you know, it's quite straightforward to tighten that up. We get three tube clips to keep the tubes nice and let's say parallel and organized. Let's put it this way. And as I stated with the V360 Lite, we have it here as well, which is kind of logical. You can remove the pump block cover because it's magnetically attached and reorient it as um, depending on the orientation of the radiator and the pump inside the case to have it nicely horizontal. The cool thing about this pump block top is it has a completely different design than any other. In the left top corner, we have a Valkyrie logo mirror effect, which is Quite cool, I do have to admit. And then the rest is covered with PCB board, copper lines and some other components just to give that a bit of a more industrial look. Um, the, the cool thing about this is that it would be much more suitable if the fans weren't addressable RGB, then it would fit perfectly like a full industrial look. But in this case, it really doesn't matter. If it performs, it's quite good. Uh, that's it. Quite easy to assemble then to place it. You have eight screws on top for the radiator because the fans come pre-installed on the radiator. Then when we're talking about uh, pump block uh, mounting on the motherboard, specifically on AMD, you have to remove the original retention brackets and use those screws, even though you do get additional AMD screws for the retention brackets inside the box, inside this accessory box. That's it. This is everything you have. And it even has thermal paste additional here in the tube because it comes pre-implied on the block. And then when you remove those retention brackets, you place the new ones that, as I stated in V360, look similar to uh, Lee and Lee. After that, you have to place additional retention brackets on the side 
tie them up with locking nuts and then you just place your AAO. One thing I didn't notice with V360 is that if you remove the magnetic cover, you can also remove the next cover that covers up the pump inside the block, right? So this gives you more ease of mounting it instead of just uh, using the screwdriver next to that centerpiece, right? So it kind of eases up the attachment towards the motherboard, towards the processor and everything else. Now for the golden sample of what I noticed and what I got in the reviews, which um, at first uh, checking out AIDA64, what I got is definitely somewhere where 240 radiator or 240 AAO should be placed. So when you compare A360 with V240, AIDA 64 Extreme Edition System Stability Test, CPU went up to 90 degrees, clock speed 4725, GPU 62. And when you compare it to A360, 85 Celsius degrees on the CPU, 4800 MHz clock speed. So you can see there's five degrees difference. You can see that 75 megahertz difference as well, which is kind of logical when you compare 360 to 240, right? And then I went to Cinebench. It starts at 83 degrees and it lowers it down right immediately to 81 and stays at 81 constantly. 5000 megahertz clock speed. And when you compare it to A360, you get 80 degrees, which is one degree difference, but it starts at 83 for the V240. And then the clock speed is the same. So <laughs> next, what shocked me, first score was 26,816. That's 400 Cinebench points more. So that's not like 50 Cinebench difference, what usually oscillates when we're talking about 10 consecutive runs. And then you have the last one, 26,912. Average of 26,850 is insane. And when I say insane, you can't expect a performance from 240 to be this good, right? So what I think is this is some sort of a, maybe it isn't, maybe I'm just lucky that this sample arrived here and it's like that. But even if you don't get this type of sample, it still can perform really good. And I'm going to check that out because I have right there A240 and it's going to be run in the same system. So A360, V240 and A240 are going to be ran in the same system, same benchmarks, everything the same. So we can have a, some sort of a comparison, which one is better. So far, the V240 is really doing a great job, I do have to admit. So it could be from my perspective and what I expect that 240 radiator compared to a 360 would do is you've seen that 360 scored 26,300 to 400 points, right? I was expecting 240 to be around 26,100, somewhere around there, right? So it scored 700 points more, which is just remarkable. And if this is true, when I compare the A240 and okay, maybe the A240 won't be that close with the scores, but if it continues with this trend, that's an outstanding performer for 240. I mean, that's insane. But all in all, I'm satisfied what it did. And shame the V360 didn't prove the same thing and went above 27,000 because then it would make much more sense, right? Because this outscored the V360. So this could be a golden sample or something similar to that. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, I can't give it a badge because it's uh, performing abnormally well. And it could be Best Buy badge because you can't expect a 240 to have such performance. But then again, it is what it is. Big thumbs up to Valkyr again, again, but no badge this time because I can't risk that this is a golden sample and it performs, outperforms all other V40, 240. So yeah, th this is where I stand and uh, hopefully it does continue with the same performance as all other V240 because then you'll have a outstanding price, let's be honest, cheaper than 360, outstanding performance and uses up much less space. So yeah, guys, this is it.
this is all that I can say for today's video. Valkyr V240 Lite. Uh, this is the black version. You have it also in white version. And the links, as per usual, are in the description below. So you could check them out and grab one yourself. If, for instance, you're aiming for a smaller case than their VK02. Who knows? That's it. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, click the notification bell, and I'll see you shortly in another one. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.